folks, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for joining me once again. You're always most welcome. Today we have a kit which has been loaned to us by one of our viewers and subscribers, a gentleman called Chris Doney, who's from a very beautiful part of the UK, Bridgewater in Somerset, which is very nice. And he's very kindly loaned us this interesting kit. It's um, one centimetre to second scale. It's the Dassel Brego Stroke Dornier Alpha Jet which of course was developed for the Germans and the French to use as a trainer and then they sold it onto all sorts of countries actually the French, a lot of their French speaking countries bought it um, including several in Africa of course I think they sold some to Thailand uh, Australia bought some, the UK bought 12 uh, ex-German ones in fact uh, they were the A model which is the one that's depicted here and it's quite a weird story actually because I, I was actually taken aback when this arrived from Chris and I thought, RAF? No, RAF Alpha Jet. And then I remembered, of course, there's some footage in the Mac Loop in North Wales of showing these in the RAF markings. And of course, it's owned by Cinetic with a C or Kinetic with a C. And this is what used to be the Defence uh, Evaluation Research Institute, I think they're called, um, down in Boscombe Down. And they did a, did a lot of testing on these uh, and evaluating their performance uh, and using them for monitoring of equipment and instrumentations and all sorts of things. So yeah, they bought 12 and then um, they actually had them um, in service and withdrew them and retired them in 2018. So relatively recently. Uh, and there's lots of photos and videos you can find of them zooming around in the Lake District and North Wales, etc. So... This is an interesting kit though because um, A, it's got the RF markings which I wasn't expecting and B, um, it's not actually an original Airfix kit anyway. Uh, this actually came out in 2008, it doesn't actually tell us on the side but I checked first. Um, but this boxing did. But the actual original tooling is from 1983 and it's an MPC kit, it's an American company isn't it? Um, the American part, Japanese America. Anyway, not Airfix's original product. Uh, and it's in the very dour, typical, I was going to say 1980s, 90s, but it's 2008, but you wouldn't know it. It's not, I mean, the artwork's not bad, but it's not the most, compared to what they do now, it's fairly basic, you know, sort of painting, drawing, and, and the, the lack of inspiration on the box itself is, is one of the things we've complained about, of course, with Airfix. But anyway, they've certainly improved these days. So it's kit number A03, or sorry, A0. They actually make it clearer on it, because they've got... The capital A is smaller, so you know that the next figure is actually a number. So it's A03035. Let's have a look. Thank you very much for loaning this to us, Chris. Really appreciate that. And he's lent us a couple of kits to look at, so this will be the first of a, a two or three, I think. Um, quite looking forward to seeing this because it's something I've not seen before at all. So here we go. Uh, there's a little bit of a chunk out of the box where somebody's, I think it's the token maybe that somebody's taken for the Airfix Club. Uh, we've got one big bag, typical thing. By the way, if you hear me sniffing, uh, don't worry, I haven't got COVID or anything. I've got a fever in the UK, we're having a lot of wind and good weather. Making me a bit sneezy, so if I sniff all that, I do apologise. Can't be helped, I'm afraid. It's just that time of the year. Now then, Airfix instructions. They always do give you a bit of history, which I do like, so let's have a look. Here we go, let's hear their version of events. They say it's a two seat trainer and light strike stroke reconnaissance aircraft, the Alpha Jet, uh, which is, is a two seat obviously, developed jointly by Dassault Breguet in France and Dornier in Germany to fulfil the Army de l'Air, French Air Force, and the Luftwaffe's requirements. Each country committed to buying 200 aircraft, the French machines being trainers, and the German Alpha Jets were using the close air support role. Okay, that's interesting. First four Alpha Jet prototypes made their flights. First, sorry, the first of four made its test flight in October the 26th, 1973, following an extensive trials program. All right, now that's interesting, isn't it? Because why is that interesting? It reminds me of the Tom. Sorry about the snibbles. It reminds me of the Tomcat and the. I'm going back to the Matchbox range. But bear with me for a moment. Matchbox brought this out in 1972-73, stroke so Matchbox had probably got their kit out six months before the aircraft actually had its test flight. That's amazing, and it was the same with the Tomcat, I think, wasn't it? Anyway, we'll go back to the story. It says here, 
Major production and deliveries then followed, uh, and they got underway in May 1978. There's always a gap, isn't there? Well, they're ironing out the faults, I guess. Two assembly lines were established at Toulouse in France and at Oberpfaffenhofen, ooh, I'm trying to say that, you better drink, in Germany, and production totaled 15 aircraft per month by 1980. That's not bad, is it? Uh, Belgium was the first export customer for the Alpha Jet when they ordered 33 aircraft to replace the Lockheed T-33 and Magisters of the Belgian Air Force training units. Two, 2.976 pounds. I'm sure that shouldn't have a dot in it. I think it should be 2,976 pounds of thrust. Yeah, 1,349 kilograms of thrust. Larzac 04 engines gave the Alpha Jet a maximum speed of 576 miles an hour, it's not bad, at sea level. For combat missions, four underwing pylons carried a variety of weapons and drop tanks, while a gun pod contained the typical French 30mm Defa French or 27mm Mauser German cannon, which could be carried on the aircraft centre line. Okay, interesting. Span 29 feet, length 40 feet, and that's it. Okay, so far so good. It doesn't mention anything about the British having them, which I think is kind of odd. Yeah, this is like a generic spiel they've had that in. I'm sure Airfix have just reprinted that from years ago. And then you'll see at the end we've got a British scheme. So you think they'd have mentioned that and explain why on earth the Brits have got it. Because it, it took me aback, I have to say. I, I've seen it before, but I didn't realise we had 12 of them. Quite surprising. Anyway, before we get into the instructions, we're going to have a quick look at the decals, which is our normal thing. Now, I've got to say, uh, not, not to Airfix's credit, that they're decal paper it's on has gone very sort of <laughs> papyrus like brown um, the, the actual decals look okay but I'm sure it wasn't that colour originally it's kind of really aged worse than matchbox do to be honest it's sideways up there we go RF Lovis markings here and this is for the 2000s and got this uh, the kinetic I said with the C it's with the Q isn't it Q at the start, Q at the end, how oh, confusing. Okay, so Kinetic is the research establishment that were privatised and became this company. And then we've also got a Belgian. So you've got Belgian or British, no French, no German, how ironic. Okay. Um, the decals actually look quite nice, I'd say. Uh, they're quite subtle. Um, so you've got instrumentation decals here. If you can see that. Bring in a bit more. It's quite cool, isn't it? Yes, very nice decals actually. Quite like those. Air fixers are usually pretty good, in fairness. Not sure if these are cartograph. Probably not. Probably a bit too. Uh, this predates the cartograph collaboration. So, let's have a proper look. So let's hope I don't start sneezing. Because there's a real danger of that. <coughs> Alright then, here we go. Now, as I mentioned, it's a 1983 kit, so we shouldn't expect too much because it was um, originally tooled by MPC. So here we go, you're building up your cockpit, and you've got your um, sticks front and rear. This is a trainer, so it's got stick in front and back. And it has this sort of um, very hawk-like undercarriage, isn't it, really? And of course, in fact, there's a comment made, I was reading an interesting comment about this on Wikipedia, amongst other comments that remarks that were made. One said that, I think it was at the Farnborough Air Show, or the Paris Air Show, I can't remember which, and some journalists were saying, what, what is the point of this aircraft? You know, they've done it again. And he was referring to the they being the French, but he was also having a bit of a, a pop at the British as well, because he was saying that they've done it again. Ever since Concorde, they're always competing with each other, and they were competing with each other with this, instead of developing the Hawk together and having a single aircraft. Two very similar planes that are competing. And, of course, they did it again later with the Eurofighter, where the French were on board for the project and then pulled out and decided to make the Rafale, which is a fine aircraft. Um, not quite as capable, not quite as advanced in its electronics, etc. Uh, and it's not quite as light either as the Eurofighter, which uses a lot more um, um, sort of carbon fibre, Kevlar and that sort of thing in the airframe. But... but <laughs> kind of reinventing the wheel for each other. It's a shame that there couldn't be more collaboration because the French and the Brits would have saved a tool, and the Germans of course, because they, and the Italians were involved in 
Italians or Spanish? I'm losing track now. Sp Italians was tornado, wasn't it? I think it was the Spanish, wasn't it, that was involved with the um, the Eurofighter. They could have all saved a lot of money if everybody just stuck together originally, you know. I mean, people complain about Brexit and the UK leaving the European Union. Well, the French did it. They had their own Frexit years ago. Did it with this and they did it again with the Rafale. Anyway, I'm not going to rant on about that. Because we so we've got plenty of French friends on the channel. But you know what I mean. It would have been so much cheaper for every country to just stick together and produce one aircraft. But I'm saying all this, I do like the Rafale. So I shall shut up and carry on. So... Building up your little tricycle undercarriage uh, main, main gigs. You've got your your front gear, of course, is being built straight into the underside of the cockpit tub. Then you're bringing in your two cockpit sides. It all looks very straightforward. This open up the holes for the other version, the strap version. Oh, I'm not quite sure I like this the way that they designed this. You've got this rather strange insert for the underneath, which I think you're going to get some gaps. Might need filling. And then you've got an arrestor hook in one of the versions. Um, and you've got two different types of nose. A version. Now that can't be right, can it? Hang on a minute, Airfix. What have you done here? Just, is it me? A version only. And the other one says A version only. Well, which is, there must be A and B versions. Surely what they're talking about. <laughs> a version and A version again. For different noses, that makes no sense, Airfix. What were you drinking? I don't know. Anyway, clearly in her. <laughs> so you're bringing in all these, um, the intake sides, of course. You've got your engine pipes, but I'm, I'm guessing that they're not hollow. I think they're blocked off, aren't they, sadly. And then you've got your co canopy cockpit coming on, wings coming on. Very straightforward build, this. It's very 1980s, isn't it? Then you've got some what look like cluster bombs, to be quite honest. Um, hmm, which is for the German ground attack version. A couple of drop tanks, and then you've got the options of which, which ones you want to put on there. And you've pretty much built up, really. And that's it, in fact. That's very straightforward. Wow! That's got to be the most uh, brief, straightforward instructions I've ever seen. <laughs> Even for 70 second scale, it does have a, a whiff of the 1970s about it, doesn't it? In Italy. Not literally, I mean, <laughs> aesthetically. Right, so here we go. Ministry of Defence, Boscombe Down. So this is the British Alpha Jet, something that's quite a rare thing. Uh, the Quinetic. And this is in rather a nice scheme. It's a wraparound camo scheme, so that looks rather nice, I think. Yeah, you could do a lot worse than that. I think that would actually be very interesting in that scheme, because it's unusual. I'll be very tempted to go with that. So you've got that one, um, based at Wiltshire, Boscombe Down, not far from Stonehenge. And that's 2007. And on the other side, you've got uh, Beauvoisin Air Base in Belgium, training wing of the Belgian Air Force. Uh, and theirs is a sort of more plain to the grey, two tone grey scheme, I think that is. Dark grey, US dark grey, yeah, and ghost grey. Yeah. And it's three tone. Oh, how odd. Okay. Very nice. Okay, fairly straightforward. Nothing fancy about it. But let's have a look at the actual plastic. I have special permission to open this, never opened before. Chris has very kindly said we can open it up, so let's have a look what we got. I'm trying to do this as sympathetically as I can for you. I always say that, and then usually. <laughs> I'll try and be good. Look away now, Chris, okay. Let me see if I can just nick it and then. Yeah, that's going to work nicely, I think. There we go. There we are. So, I think it's going to be a bit old school, this. I have a feeling. Mm. So, here we are. This is the sprue that's got the port side of the fuselage on it. And we've got a combination of raised panel lines and recessed panel lines. So it's recessed, obviously, for the uh, rudder, as you can see. And we've got the two raised areas on the tail, which is probably accurate, probably. It's quite a good looking plane, the Alpha Jet, isn't it, in all fairness? Um, I think the longer nose makes it look a bit more elegant than the Hawk, perhaps. Not that I'm knocking the Hawk, just saying. And uh, you get your drop tanks here, a little bit of flash here and there, of course, which is typical of Airfix of this era, I'm afraid. Now, what does it say on here? Hmm. 
Okay, it says DBD Alpha Jet. Can you see that? Which is Dassault Brigade Dornier. I was hoping it was going to say something about the original tooling. Which it doesn't. It doesn't. Here's the other sprue, and this is including, looks like it's got the Aiden Cannon. Uh, it's not the Aiden Cannon, it's the Mauser pod. Just here, where my finger is, this one. We've got two pilots who look like they should be in a wheelchair because they've got no legs. <laughs> very harsh, very, very harsh indeed. Let's get closer. And then we've got these uh, little nose cones, which is very confusing in the instructions because it says version A and version A. Don't know what that's about. Somebody's not thought that one through. Here's the starboard side of the fuselage. Looks quite nice. Plastic's okay, isn't it? It's quite shiny. Very much the style of uh, Airfix in the early 2000s, though, and 90s. And I, I think I'm right, they do look like cluster bombs, those, don't they? Yeah. And then you've got your pylons. Got your wheels and gear bay doors. Can't say that the cockpit's very detailed, there's lots of ejector pins everywhere, but anyway, that's the nature of the beast I think with Airfix then. And then, it's a bit of a delicate sprue, a bit careful here. This is the sprue, it's got the wings on. So, hmm. I've got to say the panel lining is rather good. Uh, I say it's a mixture of raised and recessed. The detail looks really nice, actually. Very fine, almost too fine. I'm a bit worried about that disappearing completely once you put paint on. I would go very light with your paint coats on this one, folks. Um, it's quite nicely finished. Yeah, I, quite, I quite like the panel lining. I think they've done that quite well. It looks quite scale-like to me. Very faint, though, isn't it? Look at that. See it? Yeah, that's very faint in places. Got the ejector seats. Not the best designed sprue I've ever seen. Got ejector seats here with the head boxes. Um, yeah, some fairly fine moulding here and there. There's still, still a hint of flash just sort of coming up to the surface here and there on some of the parts, but it's not too bad, I've got to be honest. Not sure about this though, this, this design where they've got this slot in and you've got a lot of different surface areas here that are going to potentially give you gaps, I think. But anybody who's made the kit, please shout up, tell me if I'm wrong. Be interested to hear it. And then, hmm, clear part. Well, I can, I can actually remove this without cutting too much of the bag. It's got a huge bag for a very small clear part. How very odd. See what I mean? Big bag. Tiny clear part sprue just for the canopy, which we will remove like so. It's not the clearest of clear, but it's like a slightly yellow appearance to it actually, not, not bad. But uh, it's a nice bright shiny finish. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. No need to worry. Yeah, it's quite nice actually. They've got the moulding of the framework quite good. So it needs a good bit of masking, only one piece of course. But yeah, it's nice. It's quite decent actually. So there we have it, really. That's fairly straightforward one, wasn't it? Uh, didn't take me long at all. So, what do we think then? Um, I think that there's uh, well, two little anomalies. I think there's um, oh, quite a bit of flash here and there, but I'm saying this is kind of the, the nature of the beast for, for the time, which is always going to count against it and in favour of the matchbox. Um, I'm not sure I like the pilots with the legs chopped off, but you know, I suppose it's not the end of the world, you probably won't see them. Um, I'm not sure about this insert bit underneath for the underside of the, uh, the fuselage. But it looks okay really, you know, it's not, nothing, nothing major about it. Um, that's for scores, scores on the doors. Hmm. I think eight, eight and a half, eight and a half, okay. Eight and a half, generous, I think generous. Eight and a half out of ten is my where I'm at, I think, for that. I think, um, yeah, I mean, it's obviously like a pocket money kit. Um, it's not Matchbox. It hasn't got the finesse of their... Um, cleanness is the word I'm looking for. The cleanness of their moulding. However, it has got some better detailing panel lines. So this is, what, this is the nature of the beast, you know, when you look at Airfix and Matchbox. 
Uh, matchbox have got less detail, but they go together like a dream. No flash. These have got flash. Don't go together like a dream usually, but the, the, the actual surface detail looks a lot better. It's kind of typical of that era. So I'm going to say 8.5 out of 10. hope you agree. Please give me a thumbs up. Give me 10 out of 10. Don't forget to smash that like button. And uh, subscribe if you haven't already to the channel. It costs you nothing and you'll be able to see as soon as the new material comes up. And if you ding the notification bell, you'll get instant, instant notification whenever a new one has been uploaded by myself. For the time being, I'm going to uh, leave you with that. I rather like the RAF uh, Alpha Jet. I've got to say, that's the scheme I do. Uh, so if you're not Belgian, perhaps, um, it's just that it's unusual to see it in the RAF scheme, and I think that's quite interesting. And uh, I always made them look interesting when they're in, you know, flying around in the valleys. Anyway, thanks very much for joining me. So we have got another kit to come from Chris, at least one. Look forward to joining you again in the very near future. Very near. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'll just say look after yourselves. Thanks a lot and bye for now.